Welcome to the Weekly Dose Podcast, your one-stop shop for the weekly news in incretin mimetic therapies with your host, Man on the Manjaro, Dave Knapp. Welcome to the Weekly Dose Podcast. I'm Dave Knapp, Man on the Manjaro. That's why I'm here. You are on the pen. That's why you're here. And today is a big news day in the world of obesity medicine and incretin mimetics. We're excited to get into it. This is the Tuesday, May 6th edition of the On The Pen podcast. If this is your first time here, welcome. If it's not, make sure you leave a five-star rating and review because you came back for something, right? We're going to get into a little bit of housekeeping before we get into new, the news, and there's a ton of it thanks to our producer over here, Clark Kent, who has really helped uh, to, to put together a great roster of news for this week. But I want to get into a little bit of a personal uh, story from this past week to give you sort of some perspective of what's going on on the pen. Uh, you can check out my blog at onthepen.com. I'll link it in the description of this video or in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast. But to make a very long story short, my wife and I were on a getaway after some rain uh, had fallen on our deck uh, at our camper. My wife slipped and broke her tibia and has required a lot of care since then. So both my wife and myself have been off work. Uh, and it seems like she's starting to turn a corner from the pain route. So I'm thankful for that, but we could just, we could use your prayers. Uh, it's just, uh, it's been a rough, uh, few days We're we're just shy of a week. Well, about a half a week into it here. And so, uh, yeah, your prayers are just appreciated. Uh, but just wanted to give a little context to why the content's a little bit slower from on the pen this but let's get into the news. Wigobi is finally hitting the Canadian market after two plus years, three years of waiting for it to hit the market after Health Canada approved Wigobi, which is the weight loss version of semaglutide from Novo Nordisk. It's actually available in Canada this week. So congratulations to our Canadian friends for the long awaited Wigovi supply. I'm sure many of you have been using Ozempic already, but the ability to go up that extra uh, 0.4 milligrams uh, at the top dose is going to be helpful for a lot of people. So congratulations. That finally happened. In other Novo Nordisk news, we had an earnings call this past week and we learned a few things and I'm excited to share these things with you uh, because you know, we tend to put a lot of focus on this channel on Eli Lilly, but Novo Nordisk has a ton of great things going on as well. Like their phase two trial, which initiated with their once weekly GIP GLP one coagonist, which will be a competitor to Majaro and Zetbound. So like Majaro and Zetbound, you have GIP and GLP one, both incretin hormones, and this activates both of those receptors like Majaro. So that'll be an interesting one to see. Uh, the phase two trials are starting, which are a little bit shorter. So we should have some readouts on that and not too long. And so we'll be we'll be interested to hear how their version stacks up against the existing version from Eli Lilly. Now, in February of 2024, Novo successfully com completed another phase two trial with higher doses of semaglutide, eight milligrams and 16 milligrams, 16 milligrams of semaglutide, which is crazy. So this trial wrapped up in February of 2024, and these higher doses are now being evaluated for uh, further and future clinical development, just to see where these higher doses may fit in uh, to the picture. Cagrasema, some news on that one. So we talk so much, and we'll talk even in this podcast about the pens, the bottleneck that the pens are in the manufacturing of GLP-1 medications. Of course, all GLP-1 medications that are on the market currently are manufactured as once weekly injection, save for Rebelsis, which is a daily oral from Novo Nordisk. Now, there are other formulations in the pipeline from both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk, Viking Therapeutics being another one uh, to watch. That one's the one I'm most excited about. Uh, but the pens being the bottleneck, right? So the unfortunate thing about Kagrasema, which will be right up there with Reditrutide for, for weight loss, uh, presumably, uh, is that the pen has to be a dual chamber. So you have two medicines, right? Whereas terzepatide is one medicine acting on two hormones. Kagrasema is actually two separate medicines combined in one. It's Kagrelintide, which is an amylin agonist, and then it's semaglutide, which we all know, Ozempic and Wigovi. Uh, but it's these two medicines put together, and they have to be in a dual-chambered pen. 
So that is going to be a tricky one uh, from a manufacturing process because it's going to require its own unique pen. <sighs> Just not the news that we're wanting to hear right now, right? Novo Nordisk, read the room. Uh, but that's an interesting um, kind of a side uh, to, to the earnings call. We also learned that the number of starter Wagovi doses is being made available in is five times the amount that were available last year. And there are 25,000 new patients starting Wagovi per month currently. Uh, so that's really good news because semaglutide is a great medicine. I know oftentimes when I do live streams, you can't avoid questions from people about these medications. One of the most common questions that I get is I can't get access to Manjaro or Zetbound, but I can get uh, Wagovi or Ozempic. Should I switch? And I said, that's a, it's a conversation for you and your doctor, not a guy on the internet. But the thing that I always encourage people is, you know, these semaglutide in the upper doses, especially very similar uh, profile from a weight loss standpoint and a glucose standpoint to terzepatide, terzepatide ed edges it out a little bit, but it'll be interesting to see as the higher doses uh, maybe become available. Of course, we've talked about before how we'll have 50 milligram revelsis towards the middle of the year. There are options coming online. So semaglutide is a great medication. It's just been less talked about because it's been less available, but five times the starter doses are coming online. This is the main news that sort of came out of the, of the Novo Nordisk earnings call. Uh, we'll be following closely to hear some more about their uh, cannabinoid receptor uh, medication for weight loss and some of the other thing, exciting things that they're doing, but we'll cover those at a later time. Moving along in the Novo Nordisk news, some fascinating information came out this week from the FTC as they are challenging some patents that they hold on semaglutide. Now, semaglutide is patented till 2031. And basically what the FTC is saying is you've got these patents on these pens and we we think they're sort of frivolous. We think that it's blocking um, the ability uh, for cheaper generic versions of the medication. And so basically they have 30 days to respond to this. And this was news that broke last week. So it'll be interesting to see if these challenges uh, that the FTC is putting forth on these patents uh, for Novo Nordisk hold up. If not, we may see actual generic semaglutide on the market much earlier than we anticipated. And I've called, followed this very closely, especially over on TikTok. Uh, I have a whole playlist if you want to follow sort of the my take on the sort of flimsy patents that have been held on, on semaglutide. In more Novo Nordisk news, <laughs> FTC also required uh, or is requesting some more information from Novo Nordisk on the Catalan deal. So you see another sort of hiccup in the road. Uh, to, to give you a little bit of context, Catalan is a huge manufacturer of generics. They also manufacture a lot of the uh, current injectable GLP-1 medications as a subcontractor for uh, big pharmaceutical companies like Lilly and Novo. And basically to expand manufacturing capacity, Novo just came in and said, we'll just buy you $16 million. And so, of course, uh, you know, the FTC is throwing a flag on the field. Eli Lilly's throwing a flag on the field. And many other big pharmaceutical companies are because they make their medicine. So all of a sudden they have their secret sauce and their recipes in the hands uh, potentially of one of their largest competitors. There's going to be uh, a lot of pushback on this one. And I'd be surprised if it gets done. Uh, Nova Nordisk is also sort of. Uh, mentioned that they don't see this deal happening this year, which was sort of the hope for them at the beginning of the year when they announced this merger. So that's uh, some interesting Novo Nordisk news. A lot to cover on Novo Nordisk this week. In sort of a brief but ironic story, we heard this past week from the Optum RX president, Optum RX being the pharmacy benefits manager uh, associated with Change Healthcare. We heard the hack and all that. We've covered that in detail on this channel, but we saw this, the, uh, President of OptumRx come out and and was kind of complaining. I don't want to say complaining, but uh, had some words to say about the way that his wife re received treatment uh, from their PBM with her pancreatic cancer. Now, what a terrible thing to go through for any family. Uh, but obviously, when you hear OptumRx coming out and complaining about the cost of medications like Ozempic and Manjaro, and, it, and you see the insurance costs increasing. It's just interesting to hear from somebody at that level of one of these companies, you know, sort of living through the pain of, of what it is to deal with these PBMs. So I'll link the, just the, the link to this article in the description of this video, uh, but you'll have to check that one out. Just sort of an interesting irony alert, right? Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, an interview that I did this past week. You can check it on last week's On The Pen uh, episode over on YouTube. I'm sort of considering streaming um, the 
the weekly show here on the podcast as well, just uploading that as uh, so you can listen to it here if you'd like. Let me know in the comments of those videos or send me an email to manjaroman at gmail.com. Let me know if you'd like to see on the pen the show that I do on Thursday nights uploaded to the podcast uh, every week as well. I'd be interested to hear if you'd be interested in that. But I had an interview with a Bloomberg affiliate locally. Uh, you can catch that. It was a really great interview just talking about obesity medicine and trying to take the stigma out of the conversation around obesity and type 2 diabetes. It was a great conversation. I appreciate them having me on. We've also covered this past week in, in sort of a couple videos, Maritide from Amgen. So Amgen had their earnings call this past week, and we learned a little bit more about Maritide. Now, Maritide is a once a month injection, right? This is this is a phase two clinical trial medication, and it sort of touts that it's got, you know, maybe a potential best in class weight loss. Uh, it's got a a advantage in being a once monthly injection versus a once weekly, but I am skeptical on this one yet. And I'm skeptical for a couple of reasons. First of all, similar to Manjaro, Zepbounter's Epitide, it acts on GLP-1 receptors and GIP receptors, but opposite in the opposite way, right? So it acts on GLP-1 uh, receptors by activating those receptors. The GIP, it actually blocks, right? And so what, uh, what many, uh, researchers have learned with GIP is that when you activate GIP receptors, you send, tend to get a reduction in side effects, especially gastrointestinal side effects. But what they've also found curiously is that whether you block the receptor or activate the receptor, it tends to lead to weight loss in patients. So sort of one of those weird things about science that they don't actually fully understand yet but activating or blocking, you get weight loss. It seems like less side effects when you activate it though. So phase one clinical trials, which are very small, but at the high doses that they were on, saw half of the participants drop out. And I think they just have a ton of work to do in phase three, as far as figuring out whether, you know, just think about it. You take the injection, it's a once monthly, very long half-life. Um, so if you have those sort of unfortunate and unpleasant side effects, you're stuck with them for quite a while, right? Uh, where the once weekly injections move, you know, out of your body at the high concentration much, much quicker. You know, they also tout the fact that the weight loss tends to be a little bit more sustained with Maritide, but you would expect that with a drug with a much longer half-life than the current ones that we see on the market. So I think they, they've got a lot to prove with this one yet. It's a monoclonal antibody delivery mechanism. So it is unique and novel in its approach, but I'm not sold completely on uh, Maritide, formerly known as AMG-133. They also talked about AMG 786, which is a weight loss pill in development that they actually discontinued after phase one. And so, you know, as a sort of an aside, you see Orforglipron, the new novel approach from Eli Lilly that's in phase three. They're already building manufacturing for that. Uh, and so they fully expect that in 20 or sometime 2026, they'll have Orforglipron hit the market. This is one less potential competitor to Orforglipron, which is unfortunate. Uh, we would like to see more and more options as more and more options create more and more accessibility to these medications. And finally, another excellent article from our friend Madison Muller over at Bloomberg this week on the, the kinks in the supply chain for Wigovi, Ozepic, Manjaro, and Zetbound. And she basically just tried to unpack with some really interesting information why these shortages exist. So we know that the shortages currently are not caused by the API. They're caused by the kinks in manufacturing pens. We talked about that earlier in this podcast, but she did get into a little bit about the API, the active pharmaceutical ingredients in these medications and the differences between semaglutide and terzepatide and how they're manufactured. So with semaglutide, you actually have a process that, that at its base is basically a process of cultivating yeast. And it's a widely scalable process, really easy to make, Sim similar to the concept of brewing beer, right? And that's how semaglutide, the protein is extracted from this yeast process. Whereas terzepatide and the manufacturing of terzepatide is a much more complicated chemical process to uh, sort of um, link chains of amino acids, right? So a little bit more complicated and perhaps a little less scalable when you talk about manufacturing the API. So although we know the pens are currently the link of the supply chain, kink in the supply chain, hopefully we get a vial presentation a multi-click pen presentation, other presentations of this medication, which will make it easier to manufacture. But at some point, you have to consider that the API could 
also become a king of the supply chain. So this is just something to watch when we think about the potential future um, uh, performance of both of these companies respectively is that with semaglutide, seems like you have a much more scalable process to manufacture the active pharmaceutical ingredient versus uh, Zepbound and Manjaro terzepatide over on the Eli Lilly side, which seems to be a little bit more complicated. So very interesting information. I really recommend that you check that article out from Madison. Again, she harkened back in this article to the release the vials campaign, which she shined a spotlight on a couple of weeks ago. So thanks again to Madison. Check out her article. Give her all the support. You can subscribe to her updates. I highly recommend that you do because they're so good and not just limited to GLP-1. Obviously, she's a health reporter for Bloomberg, and so she's all over all these different topics. So make sure you give her a follow. Thank you. Thank you for being with me this week. Thank you for bearing with me and being patient this week um, as my family has just been through the ringer. Thank you for all the support you've given us. Uh, many have sent gifts. It's so appreciated as a dad trying to take care of four kids right now on my own, trying to take care of my wife as well, and trying to balance all the other things, a full-time job and this. But I thank you for the support that you've given me this week. Make sure you go over to onthepen.com, check out the, art, the blog article that I did and give you a fuller update on our life currently. But thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being the best part of what we do at On The Pen. Until next week, we can't wait to do it again. This week, uh, we're going to have special guest hosts on On The Pen uh, to sort of take the burden off of me uh, doing the show this week so I can sort of focus on the main thing. But we will have a show, special guest host. Hope you'll tune in Thursday night, 9 p.m. Until we see you again on The Pen, have a great week.